You want to start? Sure. Uh, sorry, man. In the open section, we thought they were about me. Yeah, yeah, of course, no problem. Yeah. How did Renee Marriage do last night? Terrible. Yeah? <laughs> did you know? He's got, he speaks good English. He's very good. Yeah. Much better than my German, I'll say that. All right, good. I'll start with injuries. Um, Junior Luke, uh, we think that they will be in training next week and potentially Matthias Bogusau uh, as well. <laughs> That's German. Uh, obviously, Stewart is a, is a, uh, a little bit still um, months away, uh, but working really hard. And then the, the big question mark is Patrick Bamford. Um, we think he's doing well and moving forward. Um, I think also with the performances of the team, uh, it allows us to be patient, but we, we will still have a call to make for exactly what it means for this weekend. Um, but we want to put him in the best uh, position possible to physically be ready to pick up where he left off. Okay? Hi, right, Jesse. Hi. It's been a great start to the season so far. Another big crowd at Ellen Road last night. How important is it to feed off that positivity and to maintain this unbeaten run for as long as possible? And just looking ahead to the game this weekend, great win against Chelsea, but in some ways, given the way Brighton have started the season, could this be an even tougher test? Yeah, I would say, obviously, there's, there's momentum, but we've talked a lot internally that one is um, that we're only starting our process of becoming the team that we really want to become, and there's still a lot of work to do, and two, there's nothing that keeps you more honest than what this league is and what football and this sport in this country is. You can't, uh, if you take one second to think that you've achieved anything, then the next opponent can come and just clean you up. So we really respect Brighton. They've, they've obviously had a great season last year. Um, they've made some good additions. They have a, a wonderful manager and they're, they've had a really good start to the season. So. We know that uh, our focus and attention exactly to this challenge will be the most important thing. We're a week away from transfer deadline day. There's been a lot of talk about bringing a forward in during this transfer window. How likely is that? And if you don't get a player in, are you comfortable with the squad that you've got? Striker, yes. Um, I think I, how likely it is, it's, again, it's dependent on a lot of um, uh, others, kind of how things play out and, and what availabilities are of players. And we, we certainly don't have a surplus of big amounts of money to go out to spend and, and bring in, you know, a huge transfer. But I think we've done a good job of evaluating players that we are, 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 are of high interest to us. And then we're waiting to see and having good communication with different clubs and agents and players to see if there might be flexibility in what their contracts are and what their situations are that we can still add a quality piece to what we're doing. Luis Sinistera, we saw him for the first time from the start on yeah. the road last night. Yeah. How big an impact do you think he can make this season? And Huge. Did he give you something to think about last night with that performance in terms of your team selection this weekend? No, he didn't. I mean, we knew we already had a fantastic player, and it's, it's not been so easy for our fans and all of your media to see him up close, but we see him every day. And I was not surprised at all that he was the man of the match. I mean, he played a big part in all three goals. Um, and we think very, very highly of him. And he is driven to continue to adapt and grow within our, within our system and within our environment. And will it be this weekend? It, let's see how he gets out of the 60 minutes. I think the 60 minutes were incredibly important and valuable for him. And let's see where he's at physically. But I think for sure he becomes bigger and bigger, uh, an option to have a, a bigger and bigger role within what we're doing here with our team. So, um, and you know, also, I always think these, the most important thing is that the players are proving themselves internally, that the other players see how good you are and how, how important you can become to the team. And Luis has done that in a big way. So, um, you know, I think we need to just m monitor him physically, but then be ready that, that regardless, uh, we'll be ready to use him in a, in a big role this weekend. Did Liam Cooper come through okay last Yeah. Time? Also, that was very important for us. Uh, the idea was 30 to 45, and, and at 30 minutes he looked really strong. So we went with 45. He feels great. He's he'll be ready for this weekend, and then again trying to figure out exactly what his role will be. Thank you. Yep. And um, Mateus Click also very impressive last night. Yeah. Just How important a player is he for yeah. your squad going forwards? No, I'm really happy with Clicky. Um, 
you know, it's it, he's had to accept a different role. He and I have had really good conversations. I think the the air is totally clear, and he's committed in every way to try to help in any way that he can. And I think he's had good performances from the bench. And then last night, I think for 90 minutes to get a good 90 minutes under him, he also played against Norwich with the 21s, and he was very good in that match as well. So. Um, I think he will continue to be a big factor for us. And, and then how we rotate things, when, when we use them, how we use them. I think he's excited about the role and, and is taking it on as a, as a really important role and in a big challenge, and he'll be ready when we need him. Inevitably, he's probably got one eye on the World Cup going forwards, and because of that, we'll be desperate to get as many minutes as possible. Are you able to offer him those minutes that he needs? You know, would there be any suggestion that he might look for a move <clears throat> where he could guarantee first team football week in, week out? I think he's very committed to being here. I think he feels like the role that he and I have discussed is, is enough for him to continue to push to, to make the, the World Cup team for Poland. And if he plays like that, I think, which he, I think every time he's stepped on the field for us now in the last matches, he's played really well. So um, I think that uh, Poland will look at that very favorably, and, and Mateusz thinks that as well. A little bit more reaction from last night. It was a really big opportunity for a lot of players to show you what they can do to impress you. Um, who particularly did that for you last night? I think in, in one way or another, they all passed the test in a, in a good way. Um, the challenge I said to him to immediately after the Chelsea game and immediately before the Barnsley game was can we be as clear with our, with our tactics and, and our mentality and our performance as, as we were with the Chelsea match? And, and yeah, there's little things in there that could be better, but I think for the most part, um, we went through the match today. We heard from a lot of the guys on how they thought it went, what they thought was important in the match. I think there was a lot of really good comments and intelligence with the way that the group processed exactly what the game was. And we'll use it to, to continue to feed them with, with confidence and understanding and help them continue to grow and be more and more an option for important moments in the season. But to, you know, last night was also very, a very important moment for, for, our, for our club and for our team. And I thought all of them were ready to go and played quite well. For the younger players, particularly a huge opportunity for them, some really shone, some maybe will come away and think, I didn't do quite as well as I could have done. Is that where the man management is particularly important? You know, they feel that pressure that they want to impress. Yeah. And, and it's hard to do that sometimes. Well, listen, in, in this business, it's not, if you're not getting so many playing minutes, then it's hard to really show your development. And they need to play in order to, for, to make mistakes, to show improvement. And then we'll look at the video, we'll talk about things, and we'll find ways to help them improve. Um, and that's, uh, I take that role very seriously. I mean, I, I haven't really announced it, but Cameron Toshak is, is our now individual plan, individual coach. And so, you know, we, we've invested a lot in trying to be very clear with every player and to get their input and investment into, as to what we th they think they need to do to improve and then do it within the model of, of how we're trying to play football. And I think what we've seen is full engagement from every player. And that gives them the chance to, I think, be the best versions of themselves and continue to improve. And ultimately, that's what will help the team, is if every player is fully engaged, is improving, is, is giving everything they have to the group, and then we'll see, we'll see more and more um, quality moments for every player. Quick reaction to the draw last night. Wolves away in the next round. What was your reaction to that? Terrible. <laughs> Terrible, but uh, mostly because you know we know Wolves is a really good team, and and then it won't be easy. Um, but you know we've we've tried to build a squad that has more depth, so that we can be ready for every challenge. So that that will obviously be a big challenge for us in the in the what I think is the third round, right? They call it the third round. Um, so yeah, not what we wanted, but whatever. We'll be we'll be ready to go. And with seven all Premier League ties, it, should you get past Wolves? seven other Premier League sides are going to go. Yeah. It's a real opportunity to progress in the cup this time. No, it's true. Um, you know, and you see some big matchups in there where it won't be, di it won't be easy for some big teams. So, but we'll be totally focused on ours. That, that I know that it'll require total concentration. Can we move on to the winner then? Sure. Sorry. Thank you, sorry. Yeah. Hi, Jesse. Hi. Um, when you came in here, um, the club was in a difficult spot. You had some difficult moments yourself towards the end of last season as well. I wonder how different things are for you day to day now, especially this week, after such an impressive result against Chelsea. I would say mostly internally the, the, the feeling of, of the work has been always really, really good and really strong and the commitment from every guy. Obviously last year, the stress of relegation meant that 
a big part of my job was just the psychology of, of how we were approaching every day. I have a bigger support team now, so it doesn't require me to go over every opponent myself and every video of every session and every game myself. We still are evaluating things as a staff, but we've created a, a wider spectrum of roles and then how we relate with each other, which lessens the burden of me to do every little thing. Um, which is helpful because then I can focus a little uh, on some more of the broad things but still know when to get into the minutia. Um, so I feel like the staff is operating really well. Um, I, you know, I didn't hear Rene Marich's uh, press conference last night but he's a very intelligent person and he's helped a lot. So has Ewan Sharp. The work that Jacko does is amazing. I talked about Cameron already. Uh, Marcos is an incredible um, goalkeeper coach for me and really pushes the the environment that those guys are, are put into every day and then Aaron Dagger and, and, and Willie are helping me in every way uh, with the video analysis so we have a we have a really good support team right now and it feels like we're really moving things in the right direction I'm sure to you every day you're seeing all these people operate you're seeing the benefits that there are to all the different individuals but to the, to the wider uh, media the, the fans that the, the football Sort of public in this country, how much does a result, a headline result like that against Chelsea help? I mean, I think, um, I don't think we needed validation internally. I f the guys know that there's, I've been saying for weeks that there's something special happening here. Um, but obviously it, it helps, it always helps, right? The results always validate and, and against good opponents, yeah, of course. But, but even before the game, I, I said, shut the door shut the door on that result because for the next game and the next game it doesn't mean anything and and we need to stay laser focused and fully concentrated on improving and maximizing our potential every day and then continuing to commit to the playing style the 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 mentality of the group the the engagement the everything because again the minute you think you're doing well you'll get smacked in the face so we're, we're very aware of that. We're very aware of that. And then, you know, in terms of who I am and what I try to do every day, it doesn't change a whole lot. Uh, I'm, I'm still, the work is, is the most important thing. And that's what I'm focused on every day. And just finally, Archie Gray has been in and around the first team squad yeah. this season. I just wondered how his GCSEs have gone. Yeah. Um, you know, he had to finish school. So now he's done that. Uh, we got the word today that he got his, well, I don't even know if it's a diploma or, or what. GCSEs. For yeah, GCSEs, yeah. right? Yeah. So he said he got B. I asked him in front of the team and he said he got B's and A's. So, but he said B's first, which made me think maybe more B's than A's. Um, <laughs> uh, but clearly he's a bright kid. And then he was, he was sick for a little bit. He didn't have COVID, but he had like some sort of weird uh, uh, stomach, intestinal flu or something. So, you know, we're still, he's still a big part of everything we do every day. And he's such a great kid um, that it's a pleasure to have him around. And, and again, he's not, it's not like you have a 16 year old kid in the first team. It's like, he's one of the players. So it's a big compliment to him. You don't have to worry about those exam results to be fair as in the way his football's going. No, I think, but I think, you know, his family and him are committed to him you know, educating himself. So he even talks about take, talking, taking some of his A-levels, which I, th I would, you know, I fully encourage because I think a well-rounded human being is an important part of being a good footballer. Thank you. Yep. Great. Uh, Cody wanted to work <coughs> uh, in January to get games and did so. Why was he happy second round for this season? How's he getting on? I think he's doing great. Um, you know, we had some tough, Co Cody and I had some tough conversations at the end of last year when we had him in for training, um, I think he had a very good experience at Cardiff and, and in his mind maybe wanted to stay there. Um, I challenged him to think about challenging himself to be here, to that it was really good that he got games and that he was playing well. And I watched uh, not every game, but I got highlights of most of his games and I, and I watched a lot of his actions. Um, and, and, you know, I think over time he's enjoyed being here. And I think in there has played good football and I think with him they kind of go hand in hand and now the key for him is to not need the enjoyment and need more of the drive to be the best that he can possibly be and get out of his comfort zone which he did by going to Cardiff but like challenge himself at a high level to really maximize who he can be every day and I think he's done that in a big way. Um, it's been a pleasure. I've seen him grow a lot in the last weeks. I think he's performed well within the team. I think he's fit well within the team. So, yeah, I mean, 
what happens with him going forward, I think um, it's not it's not totally solidified one way or the other quite yet. You know, the window is still open. I think he knows he wants to play games, and that's important for him, but we also value having him here. So we'll see how the next week goes and exactly what, what comes out of it. But I can just say that in the moment, I think he's fully a part of our team and our club and, and has a big future here. When he had his moment with uh, catching behind the play last night, that was one and all in Calder was it's in great. There. Did you like that? Yes, loved it. And, and to be fair, they all stood up for each other but didn't cross the line, right? So it's, it, it's really important that everybody, you know, got, has each other's back. And it, I didn't, it, Cody did nothing to deserve the reaction. But Cody stood up for himself and the team stood up for him. But no punches were thrown. Nothing stupid was done in the process. It was just a, a group showing total solidarity and commitment to each other. So this kind of stuff for me is important. And I know there's, you know, these mass confrontation things and referees are trying to avoid all this. But for me, part of being a team is making sure you have each other's back. So I thought that was great. Yeah. You said there isn't a huge surplus of cash to make any massive signings in the last week. Obviously, Andre has been on the record with the big Etelard business. What would you say to fans that query the fact there was money there for the Etelard, but not the surplus that you're talking about? Well, I think um, I want to be fair to Andrea because for me, he's committed to, in every way to every request that, that I've had since I've been here. So, um, you know, it's, we're just operating within a budget that, that is defined. And, and, you know, we're trying to find flexibility and be aggressive with, with some options, but doing it in a way that, that honors what Andrea has provided for us with the commitment. And listen, he's, I have a great relationship with him. We talk daily. Honestly, we talk daily. And then, you know, and then there's always the conversations between Victor and Angus and us and trying to, to make sure we're all on the same page. And obviously, over the transfer period, things kind of ebb and flow based on, the development of the team and, and each individual player. So, I mean, I could bring up 10 guys maybe that, you know, where maybe there was a thought about, like like we talked about Clicky, that maybe there, there was an idea that alone and what it meant to Clicky and his future and what it meant to us. And then it's come together in a way where I think everybody sees things now the same way and there's the air is very clear and, and very understood and then we can move forward all together. So in the end, that's what's most important, that whatever decisions get made, either to move players out or bring players in, are done with the exact strategy and idea in mind for exactly what we need. And I can, again, a big compliment to everyone involved here in this building and at Ellen Road that we've done that really well. You've got very good selection problems across the team at the moment, especially at centre back now that Liam's back. How hard will it be to leave the captain out when he's, when he's fit and ready, given how Diego and Robin have done? Liam's going to play a big role in the team no matter what. So, um, but yeah, Diego and, and Robin have done really well. But you see, I, I told Liam even before we put him on the pitch, he hadn't trained much before this, this match. And he, it was the same when he came back from his injury in the spring and when he came back again the second time after he picked up a little knee injury. And every time we put him on the pitch, he played flawlessly almost, right? So in terms of a mentality and a, and a professional and a leader, he's, um, again, the best I've ever seen. So um, we will need him, all right? Trust me, he will be used and he will be needed. Yep. Well, with a performance like that on Sunday, it, it, thing about it is it sets a benchmark for the team. How reasonable is it for people to expect that they will see a lot of that this season? And I guess what should ex expectations be for this year? Yeah, I mean, obvious. I mean, I heard people saying this after the med, the match that this was a benchmark, and I, I don't think like that as much. You know, sometimes in a process, things can come together in a match, in a match plan with an opponent, where it comes together in the right way. Um, but there, we still ha will have massive challenges, and it, we we won't be able to control big opponents or any. Op opponent for that matter as well maybe as we did in this match and to be fair Chelsea had big chances in the beginning and even at the start of the second half the save that Elon makes is not offside and, it, and in the 50, 51st minute if he doesn't make that save after VAR it could be it could be 2-1 so you know I mean all of these things uh, the, 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 the margin of error the, the, the line is so thin between success and failure in any moment that we just have to know that we can play to a certain level but also we felt that internally and continue to have a drive and hunger to get even better and perform even better 
Um, so, and, and I believe we have that in us, but that's the goal is to never stop. Thank you, Stuart. And what was, sorry, there was a second part that you said that I'm not sure if I addressed it. The second part of it was what should the expectations be for this season? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, I shouldn't have answered that. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, the expectations, um, it's always, with, with who we are and where we are, it's dangerous to talk about expectations for me. It's, more, it's much more valuable to talk about game, game to game, right? I mean, that's always the case, but obviously when you have one of the best teams in the league, you can dream about titles. And for us, it's more about now, can we, can we really have a strong environment, get everyone healthy and performing at their best, be able to have options in every position and at, at, at every moment for every game and perform at our best level every match. And if we do that, I think we can pick up a lot of points. And we can then start to maybe in a few weeks or in a couple months talk about, okay, we want to be mid-table, we want to be top 10, we want to be these kinds of things. But we're not, we're not there yet for me. Jesse, just, uh, could, could you talk a bit more about what Cameron Toshak's role will be and why you feel it's important? Yeah, so first of all, um, we've spent a lot of time um, working with the players to create individual plans that include everything from um, technical, tactical, nutrition, gym, physical and gym work, psychological, mentality, and then he's put together action plans for every player that include measurables in all of these areas, that include weekly work, that include uh, additional meetings, um, video, uh, and so for me, more than, and, and I think that the, the role will continue to grow and be flexible. He's also on the pitch every day with players working. Um, he's ghost coaching during training in certain positions when we're working on certain things. So, and the role will continue, I think, to grow and change based on what we find is the most valuable. Um, I've always wanted to have someone in a role like this, and I'm thankful that the club has supported me and us in this way to, to now be able to execute the plan. And I think we're already seeing the rewards and, the, and I think we'll continue to show the investment that, that I and we have in them as people to help them maximize who they can be. And just, it, it seems from the outside at least as though the game's got much more tactical in recent years and all that sort of thing. How important is it that you have footballers with footballing intelligence? Massively important. I mean, <coughs> it's, and it's, it's always easy to evaluate in, when watching video how talented a player is and what his qualities are. The tougher things are to know his exact mentality and, and in there mostly how he handles difficulty. Um, and then to really process how quick of a learner is he. Um, and those, maybe those two things wind up being as important if not more important than the actual football talent and quality. And, and I found that over my recruitment life in football that getting to the core of their learning abilities and mentalities winds up being di dictating exactly how good that, what, what the potential of that player can be. I've been lucky to work with um, some incredibly talented players. Uh, the name that would come to mind is Erling Holland, but I could say Dominic Schoberschlag, I could say um, a lot of different, uh, Christo and Cuckoo, and then a lot of the guys even here. Um, <coughs> And, and what really defines their learning curve and their potential is who they are as people. So, um, yeah, that's it's a people business. I've said that before here, and it's, that's, that's, that's the truth. I mean, perhaps on that theme as well, do you think when, when you're a new manager, do you, do you have to win over people um, in your own squad? And do you think uh, results and performances like um, Saturday, uh, Sunday, Kind of in some ways, everything you do in this position is being judged by everyone. Um, I don't treat it that way, and I try, conversely, not to be someone who walks around and judges everybody. I try to appreciate people for, for who they are and what their, what their good qualities are. I try to also get to the core of, of trying to figure out how they can be the best versions of themselves. And then, when I do my job, I, I'm open. I'm, I, I, when I make mistakes, I speak about them. I show vulnerability. Um, certainly, I, I try to show my strengths and my intelligence and my experience and have that add up to be something that people can relate with and, and, and are drawn to. 
Um, but in the end, it's I think more, uh, more about my ability to give than it is to take information from them or their judgment. And, and I try to exemplify that with the work that I do. Just on the, on the specifics of day to day, to get that level of running that you did on the side and the, the aggression, are you, do you have to manage their intensity in training? Or, yeah, yeah. Or do you, can you just, you don't unleash them? No, no. And say, to, I mean, I, 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 for the way I think about football and training and games and, and tactics and putting it all together, I sometimes say I feel like I'm wearing a lab coat because I'm evaluating their nutrition, their weights, their, their loading, their gym work, everything that they're doing physically, their, their sleep, their, their wellness app, their, and I'm working carefully with, with Rob Price and the entire medical team to make sure that as physical athletes, specimens, we're maximizing the potential of who they, who they are and who they can become. And then add the piece of the tactics in the football and the mentality and the work ethic and, and putting it all together to create football high performing machines right and and but do it in a way that's respectful of their lives and, and who they are as people and then i think then you access brilliance um so you know i said last year when i came and i got killed for it by all of you guys about marcelo overtraining. but the in my experiences the reality was that the team was done F physically emotionally everything and the first thing I had to do was try to mold them in my vision, what I thought they needed to come, how they needed to come out of that. And then with a long-term focus on how to modify them to be the, the types of athletes I think that we need to, for them to perform in the football that we want to play. What you see now, if you just look at physical data, is, is that sometimes we run more, sometimes we run less, but the high intensity and the sprinting and some of these values have gone up and the decelerations and accelerations are, have gone down, which sometimes those things, the stopping and going, can be more stressful on the body than the pure sprinting. So, but knowing that we need them to do that, we also need to train them to be sprinting athletes. And so it's a little bit different methodology and, and now to make sure that we're, we're on top of how we do that every day. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're getting to the point where you feel, I feel strongly about what, how they're able to perform just from a physical standpoint. Okay, we'll move on to the embargo.